What is going on everyone? I'm your host, the one and only, and today I wanted to take a time capsule back in time to do my first ever retro review. Although, I don't necessarily think this constitutes as old, it still sort of qualifies though seeing as how the EU now is going to make it mandatory for all phones sold within their borders to feature USB-C by the fall of 2024. So that being said, Apple, come on man, what in the world are you waiting for? Get rid of the lightning on your iPhones, especially the Pro models, man. Like, what gives? Your Pro iPad switched from lightning to USB-C. Why can't the iPhones? Oh wait, I know why. Money. In all seriousness, this accessory was great back in its heyday. It was a much more sophisticated solution to charging your iPhone or other lightning-enabled accessory at a desk while you worked on schoolwork, a class project, or on your actual job. Even after almost seven years since these bad boys were first introduced, I still find myself using these guys to prop my phone up while I work on YouTube or schoolwork, and best yet, in the modern world, filled with iPhones that feature Face ID, they're actually quite useful as I'm able to look at my notifications and it unlocks instantly, given the fact that it's already propped up and the Face ID sensor fires up immediately. So, without further ado, let's get into a quick unboxing and look at a piece of history with Apple's official lightning dock that released more than half a decade ago. Let's get right into it. So as I mentioned, I use these lightning docks almost on the daily at my workstation and kind of never give them a second thought. I was actually in my storage closet and found a brand new and sealed black lightning dock, so I figured I'd share it with all of you. So first, we have a very simple and minimalistic box. I mean, Apple went full bare bones here. The front of the box says iPhone lightning dock as well as your color choice with a front profile of the dock. We see we have a pull tab on the back. So yank that off, but do it with care. And then slide out the tray that is neatly nestled in its tray wrapped in a frosted plastic. But first, let's take a look at what's inside the box. We do have our standard literature packet with instructions and warranty information, but you'll notice no lightning cable, which is kind of odd, but Apple's logic is that one came with your iPhone already. So again, money. But now, going back to the lightning dock, remove the frosted plastic and you'll see our gorgeous black aluminum that's cold to the touch, and first thing that pops out is that angled lightning connector. So looking along the back, we find our lightning connector because yes, you do need a lightning cable to power this sucker on. It's not wireless, nor does it have any kind of removable batteries. You must connect the dock to a lightning cable that you can already use to charge your phone in the first place. Yeah, some people saw no reason in dropping an additional $50 to charge your iPhone, something you can easily already do without the dock. And trust me, I understand. It's just a bougier way of charging the phone all while having it perfectly weighted and propped up so that you can see incoming notifications or quickly just glance at the time. But to the left of the lightning port, and a sure sign of the dock showing its age, is an audio output port, so you can connect the set of headphones that use a 3.5mm headphone jack or a set of external speakers. So it has more uses than just charging your phone all fancy and stuff. Towards the top, we find our slightly angled lightning connector I mentioned earlier, with this little soft bumper found underneath it. This creates some distance between the lightning connector and your iPhone to allow the speakers and microphone on the bottom to have no impediments, but also to create some space in the event you rock your iPhone with a case. Now, it's not universal in terms of case compatibility, so some thicker cases may have to be removed, but all of Apple's official first-party cases will work while being attached to their iPhones, so no worries there. Again, it all really depends on the design of your third-party case. Towards the bottom, we have this nice rubber foot to create some grip between it and your table or desk so that the lightning dock doesn't slide off and bust your iPhone phone and the dock is slightly weighted so it's actually much heavier than meets the eye but it's not super heavy it's just heavy enough to perfectly counterbalance most lightning devices i say most because over the years iPhones and iPads have become larger, and so have all the iPads that featured a lightning port over the years. And as you can see here, I'm trying to balance the most recent 10.2 inch iPad 9th gen. It's just not happening, nor do I feel secure in knowing that the center of gravity is just not going to cut it, and the iPad will topple over with just the slightest touch. Once again, it is a universal lightning dock, so realistically, any Apple product with a lightning connector will be compatible, even such things as iPads iPods, keyboards, 
trackpads, heck, even AirPods. So as a tech reviewer, these things come extremely handy, especially when trying to get that perfect thumbnail shot to easily and reliably prop up your device. These aluminum color matched lightning docks first launched during the iPhone 6s era. Do you guys remember those days? Ah yes, much simpler times. But anyway, for those wondering, the 6s launched in 2015. Feel old yet? And back then, the docks were available in four beautiful finishes to perfectly match the color choices of the iPhone 6s, which included space gray, silver, rose gold, and gold. But then, a year later when the iPhone 7 rolled around, it came with that gorgeous jet black option as well as the all black design. So for 2016, Apple simply included this all black option, which by the way, much attention to detail was placed. As you can see, if you look at the bumper around the lightning connector, it's actually color matched to the antenna bands corresponding to their matching colored iPhones. So if you notice, the silver one and the black one have different colored bumpers to match their corresponding antennas. Pretty cool. My only nitpick with this accessory is that at first, it's really cumbersome to use the dock, since at times, it's a bit difficult to line up your device with the angle design of the lightning connector, and you'll occasionally scratch up the bottom of the device on and around your lightning port. But after a while, you do get pretty used to it. Well guys, what do you think of this seven year old accessory that will soon fade into obscurity? Once again, most people saw no point in these. Why pay $50 to charge my iPhone with a silly stand when the cable does it just fine? I get it, trust me. Plus, that just adds one more cable to your desk setup. But I always found them quite useful to prop my phone up and watch notifications as they come in and back in the day, having that audio output port was really cool, especially considering that the iPhone 7 got rid of the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. So Apple went on to say that this was the best solution to charging your phone and listening to music simultaneously. Of course they'd say that though, right? Because it took courage to remove the headphone jack or whatever. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this short journey to the past reviewing an accessory that is quite old by today's standards, but can still be useful in specific instances. This accessory is no longer sold directly by Apple, but I have provided an Amazon affiliate link down in the description in case you also want to snag one of these semi-useful accessories for yourself. In any case guys, let me know what you guys think of these retro reviews and definitely drop down your ideas for what I should review for episode 2 of this series. I love you guys and I cannot wait to catch you all in the next one.